All right, uh, joining us now, Rick Reeder, Chief Investment Officer of Global Fixed Income at BlackRock. I guess, Rick, I mean, where, where do we even start? Um, <laughs> I, I would have uh, asked you about what we were seeing last week uh, in the credit markets, and I, I do want to hear what you have to say about, about that. But then, I mean, after what we heard from the Fed in reaction to that, there's just so much to talk about that they just, just go. <laughs> so, Joe, I, I, like Becky said, I'm not used to comparing things to 1933, but in a lot of these markets, that's what we're doing today. It is. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just every part of it is historic. Listen, while I talk about what the Fed's doing, the Fed's doing is, is immense. I mean, the Fed is putting, I don't even know what bigger than a bazooka is. I mean, the amount of size they're putting in the market is extraordinary. I mean, the liquidity they were putting at $60 billion a month was incredible. Now we're talking about $75 billion a day. And they're getting at some of the other markets. And they're getting at, like you said, the investment-grade credit market. And that's starting to stabilize. Last couple of days had a pretty good, pretty good move to it. High yield is still really difficult. The mortgage market has stabilized. The off-the-run treasury market has stabilized because the Fed is getting at it. And that, that is powerful. Rest of the markets, listen, I mean, one of the yeah, people don't realize that what's moving some of these markets is it is not a lot of uh, not a lot of volumes. I mean, a lot of volume will trade, but in very small size. So, I mean, this is this pretty incredible stuff. The credit market is, like say, investment grades better, but the high yield market is still tricky, and it's all about following what the Fed is going to do. The markets that are really stabilizing and that are actually performing well is where the Fed's going. Someone told me it was like, um, what was it, trying to do something with a wet spaghetti noodle. I can't remember what it was, like play darts with a wet. I, I don't, I mean, <laughs> that's the neg That's the half-empty view of where the Fed is. Uh, and uh, the, yesterday... I realized that the Wall Street Journal um, was making a pun. They said something about used the last arrow to stop the markets from quivering. You know, they used quiver and arrow in the sense, of, but but implying that that was it. That uh, there's if if you know there's a wild boar coming at the Fed now, they, it's going to be hand to hand combat. They don't they don't have any more arrows for it. Do you, do you buy that? No. I, I, I also don't have any more arrows. And I think Neil Kashkari was incredibly. Uh, thoughtful when he described it the other night and said that the Fed has unlimited bullets. People don't realize the Fed will win. The Fed has unlimited bullets, particularly when inflation is running as low as it is. You look at where the inflation markets were going back three or four days ago. And now, now, by the way, the Fed has stabilized that and you're seeing inflation break evens move higher. The Fed has unlimited bullets. I mean, listen, the ECB's in a tougher spot. The Bank of Japan's in a tougher spot. But what the what the Fed can do in the amount of arsenal they can put it, and I think the thing that people aren't giving them enough credit for, is they're doing things that heretofore have not post Dodd Frank have not been in, within their remit, and so doing things in the municipal market, although I guess that that actually was within the remit, but doing things within the credit markets, I mean that is all pretty powerful stuff, and uh, you know what. I don't think people realize when people follow the stock market and they think about, okay, what are equities doing as well too in the equity market? If you go back a few days ago, the AAA assets were under incredible pressure across all markets. People were trying to raise cash. Until the Fed came in, the AAA assets were under pressure. You can't build up to how do you buy equities, how do you buy credit, how do you buy other assets until AAA assets stabilize. And that's where the Fed's gotten at it. Now, listen, there's still some more digestion that has to go on. But anyway, that's, that is super important. People underestimate that. I, more and more bullet. I, I mean, I, that's that was the word I, I mentioned a few times. I'm glad I watched uh, 60 Minutes, hard as it hard as, as it is sometimes, Rick. But but I'm glad I did watch uh, uh, Kashkari use that that infinite word, and I felt a little bit more confident. But why wouldn't you be recommending gold, or why isn't gold over two thousand uh, dollars? We used to worry about. Current deficits, remember we're talking about Trump running them over a trillion dollars and how they could go to two trillion. Now we're layering mm -hmm. on uh, this on top of that and, and we're not going to get any tax revenue from uh, the economy for, or not nearly as much because there's not going to be any growth. Why isn't, unless you believe in MMT, why isn't this a really scary time uh, in terms of what we're going to be left with when, when it's all said and done? So, Joe, I think, I think your point is incredibly thoughtful in that gold, you think about what was happening a few days ago, to all the, the hedges, all the risk-off assets, as we call them, treasuries weren't working as a hedge. People were just raising cash. People just wanted to have cash. And, and by the way, I think it's a pretty good asset to have today as part of a balanced portfolio. But gold wasn't working. Treasuries weren't working. And think about what just happened in the last two or three days. 
treasuries are all of a sudden working. And you see, by the way, you look at the equity sell off in the last couple of hours. Um, treasuries are working. And, and by the way, now gold is working. But why it didn't work a couple of days ago or last week is the cash people were using because they had the post margin. People were using it to raise cash. I think you're dead right. I think gold is going higher. And I think, quite frankly, I think part of why treasuries are going to be contained is they work again, particularly when you have a big buyer behind you. But to the, to the ultimate question that, I mean, what about our children and grandchildren? I mean, that's what people are talking about. The, is it, yeah. Can we handle that? We got a great, I mean, I hope we can. Yeah. We have a great economy. Rates are probably <laughs> going to stay low. Um, we have, I don't think we've taken into account, believe it or not, I, I, I believe in the singularity to some extent that these great strides mankind's making, that the time between each one is getting shorter and shorter. And I, I don't yeah. think we can really appreciate that with the Internet or whatever comes next. So I'm hopeful. But, man, we're running up a tab, Rick. Yeah, no, we definitely. But I think you got to put it a little bit in perspective. When people talk about the Japan, of this is the Japanification of, of uh the U.S. I actually don't think that's right, because, as you said, things like technology are different. Things like the uh, demographic curve is different. Listen, we are going to run up a big tab, but I think you need to put a little bit in perspective in that what the Fed's doing, the Fed's balance sheet, I think now is going to be a little over $5 trillion. That's about 20, I think that's 23 or so percent of GDP. <laughs> Europe is much more than double that, and Japan is, I think, four times that. So we've got some room. The Fed has some room. And listen, part of what this funding is going to be is going to be for near-term dynamics. But yeah, are we putting more debt on the system? Yes, you have to be careful about it. Do I believe in MMT? No, I don't believe in MMT. There is a, there's a limit to how much you can do. Putting fiscal stimulus in today to bridge from here to there because it's a near-term shock to the economy has real efficacy behind it. And you've got to do it. But, but you got to be really careful. And like you say, we can't just keep building the tab. We're in much better shape than the rest of the world because of our organic growth is better, our demographic is better, our innovation is better, our energy dynamic is better. But you got to be really careful about the amount of debt you're willing to put on the system. Are we supposed to put some debt on now to get through, to bridge from here to there because of supply chain breakage, cash drain? 100%. But you got to pull it back. And my sense is you get a chance to do that when you're on the other side of this. But, uh, but, you know, like you say, MMT maybe goes a step yeah. too far in my, in my so mind. So if you're sitting out there as a, just an investor, maybe has money, maybe mm -hmm. would like to raise cash or something, what would you be doing right now? Would you be st standing aside because we just don't know anything about, about the, the uh, chronology of the, of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, I think you've got to be patient around these markets. And I think you got to think about, you know, what is the long term? What do I want my portfolio to look like three to six months hence? I do think you've got to run cash. And, you know, in our funds, we run a high level of cash. And I think that's that's got to be part of it. But listen, I also think, first of all, I believe you follow the Fed, treasuries, mortgages, now investment grade credit. The Fed will win. And I, and I like being invested alongside the Fed. Uh, they have a big stick. And then I think you got to look at some of these equities that are, I mean, people uh, six months from now, a year from now, are going to look at the free cash flow multiples. I was looking at numbers today around technology, communications, defense, healthcare. We're buying companies of free cash flow of multiples in the high single digits, and you get an equity risk premium that is we've never seen. Literally, go back to World War II, you never just see numbers like that. Those will come down, and you got to think about, gosh, maybe I'll nibble at some of this, keep a high cash position, follow the Fed, own some treasuries, own a bit of gold, which, I, like I said, like you said, I think is the right thing. But I think if you miss this opportunity around some of these, I mean, look at what happened yesterday. I think you want to buy some of these okay. companies that will make it over the, over the long term.